Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Sotihotu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan, Rahayu, 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 Salam Multikultur. Honorable the Dean of Faculty of Medicine Universitas Surabaya, Dr. Irwin Aras, Magister of Epidemiology and Master Medical of Education, Honorable the Vice Dean for Academic and Student Affairs, Dr. Risma Ikawati, Doctor of Philosophy, Honorable the Vice Dean for Finance, Assets and Human Resource, Dr. Sawitri Bungas, Ophthalmologist, Honorable the Guest Speaker, Professor Lee Hije, Doctor of Philosophy from Faculty of Medicine, Kangwon National University, Honorable all lecturers and staff of Faculty of Medicine, Respectable all participants of this general lecture, My name is Meta Lestari Utami, your Master of Ceremony this morning welcome you to General Lecture Faculty of Medicine Universitas Surabaya, Study of Heart to Recover Cognitive Impairment. We would like to thank everyone here for taking time to attend this General Lecture. To start our opening ceremony this morning, allow me to read today's agendas. First, opening ceremony. Second, welcoming speech. Third, General Lecture Session by Professor Lee Hee Doctor of Philosophy. Fourth, Q&A Session. And the last is Photo Session and Closing. Let's skip on to the next agenda that is, that is Welcoming Speech. The speeches will be delivered by our Dean, Dr. Is, Dr. Irwin Aras, Magister of Epidemiology and Master of Medical Education. Dr. Irwin, the time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Meta. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the first, I want to greet the distinguished speaker, Professor Lee Hijai, PhD from Kangwon National University, Korea. Uh, thank you for your willingness to give a lecture today. I hope this will give us insights regarding herbal medicine. And I hope it also will become a good opportunity for collaboration between Surabaya University and your institution in the future. Uh, this lecture is the opening or beginning of the academic year 2020-2021. And hopefully it will be a good start for academic activities during this pandemic uh, for faculty medicine, Universitas Surabaya. Uh, sorry, uh, I will uh, greet to all the uh, audience in Indonesia, Professor Lee. Uh, yeah. Selamat pagi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh untuk semua mahasiswa Insan. baru di, dari uh, Fakultas Kedokteran Universitas Surabaya dan seluruh mahasiswa uh, kedokteran dari seluruh angkatan. Selamat bergabung di acara ini. Semoga seminar ini memberikan uh, wawasan kepada Anda, uh, penguatan pemahaman tentang herbal medicine uh, bagi kita semua. Uh, dan sekali lagi, selamat bergabung di Fakultas Kedokteran. Kita akan berinteraksi lebih lanjut. I think uh, this, uh, in, uh, this is my uh, welcoming speech and I hope Uh, we will learn much from uh, Mr. Lee about uh, herbal medicine, especially uh, herbal medicine in uh, your institution, Professor Lee. Uh, we hope we can uh, make some collaboration in the future. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Irwin Aras, Magister of Epidemiology and Master of Medical Education. Dear audience, ladies and gentlemen, as we have finished our opening to lead the next session, I would like to invite Dr. Heru Wijono, internist, to moderate the general lecture today. I, Meta Lestari Utami, would like to say thank you very much. Dr. Heru, the time is yours. Thank you, Meta. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, today we have such a distinguished speaker, 
uh, and welcoming Professor E. He J with a very interesting curriculum vitae. Please allow me to introduce. Uh, Professor E. He J started the education in the Department of Genetic Engineering, Korea University, Seoul, Korea, and gaining Bachelor of Science in 1996, continuing on until 1998, gaining Master of Science from Graduate School of Life Science, Korea University, Seoul, continuing again uh, until 2001, gaining Master of Medical Science, a majority of Pharmacology and Graduate School of Medicine, Gyeonghee University, Seoul, Korea, continuing again 2002-2004, and becoming a Doctor of Philosophy, Medical Science, Graduate School of Medicine, Gyeonghee University, Seoul, Korea, and this is very impressive. At the same time, in 2002-2006, uh, he went to JSPS Ronpaku Dissertation PhD program, Kyushu University, Fukuoka, Japan, and gaining Doctor of Philosophy Science. The experience is quite widespread from 2002-2004 from research scientists from Kuwang Medical Research Institute, Seoul, Republic of Korea, continuing to Medical Science in the Institute as a research professor, Kang Won National University, becoming instructor in 2005 until 2007, becoming assistant professor, Department of Pharmacology School of Medicine, Kang Won National University, gaining 2011 to 2017, associate professor, Department of Pharmacology School of Medicine, research scholar, quite impressive, postdoctoral, Department of Neuroscience and Cell Biology, Piscataway, New Jersey. And since 2017, he became professor, Department of Pharmacology School of Medicine, Bangwon National University, Republic of Korea. And since 2018, he is the Director, Innovative Institute of Education, Kangwon National University, Republic of Korea. The honors and awards, uh, one of them is in 2001, becoming the best thesis award. The publication is very plenty, very numerous, 37 and I am counting. But there is one thing that uh, very interesting, number six, multiple mini interviews as a predictor of academic achievements during the first two years of medical school to name only one of the of the others so uh, due to time considerations I, uh, we would like to start the general lecture please uh, professor ej uh, the time is yours sir thank you very much Okay, uh, Salama Pagi, and thank you very much for your nice introductions, uh, Dr. Heru. And thank you, Dr. Uh, Jeffman and Risma Ikwati for your invitation of this guest lecture. And thank you, uh, Dr. Irene Arsa, Dean, uh, for a welcome speech. And it's my honor to have a presentation to the faculty and students of Faculty of Medicine, Universitat Surabaya. Uh, as you heard of from my introduction, I'm from Taiwan National University, South Korea, and I'm currently doing research for a year at Universitas Indonesia as an exchange professor. And let me introduce my university, uh, Kangwon National University first. Uh, we have uh, three campus and uh, 22,000 of students are attending the school. And uh, School of Medicine uh, located in Chuncheon campus, which is one hour far from Seoul. And by the way, the Chuncheon city is a very nice place to live because people can do all kind of leisure activities. 
And as my hometown, Chunsan City, uh, Surabaya City brings up a lot of good memories for me because I grew up in Surabaya City for seven years as a child. And since my father worked in PT Mion, Indonesia, as, uh, um, and I came to Surabaya, uh, and when I was three years old, uh, and uh, I've been to Surabaya Intellectual School until third grade. So I am, but I've been Surabaya yet. So I hope to visit again some days. And unfortunately, I cannot be with you on the same place, uh, but I wish you have a beneficial time today. Um, I will talk about herb to rescue cognitive impairment. And for that, I will briefly explain about cognitive impairment first, and to explain about candidate components to rescue a cognitive impairment and uh, Indonesian jamu bogagan to rescue, how they rescue cognitive impairments. And finally, I will uh, discuss about future research perspective. As the social and economical conditions and the health environments improve, you know, human uh, life expectancy is increasing. And compared to uh, today's 2020, so we are in here. So compared to the average life expectancy in Asia 50 years ago, uh, it has increased by about 15 years and is expected to increase over uh, 75 in the next 50 years. So like the rest of our body, cognitive change as we grew uh, older. And many people notice gradually increase uh, forget, uh, forgetfulness as they age. It may, take to, uh, it may take longer to think of a word or to recall a person's name. And semantic memory and short-term memory show remarkable pres uh, preservation across most of the adult lifespans, uh, with decline occurring only very late in life. By, con uh, by contrast, autobiographical memory, uh, emotional memory, and implicit memory are relatively un un unaffect uh, unaffected by uh, aging. However, uh, who has uh, trouble not only remembering, but also learning uh, new things and uh, concentrations uh, or making a decisions. So we call it a uh, definition, it cognitive impairment. And cognitive impairment can be classified uh, three stage, uh, preclinical, uh, mild cognitive impairment, and dementia. The preclinical uh, pre stage is that the patients may notice the change, uh, but not detectable on assessment. And the dementia stage reveals severity to interfere with everyday abilities. And uh, mild cognitive impairment is considered an intermediate stage uh, between expected cognitive decline of normal aging and the more serious decline of dementia. So it could involve problems with memory, language, uh, thinking, and judgment that are greater than normal age-related change. And uh, as you know, the age-related, age-associated uh, memory impairment and, uh, and uh, cognitive impairment, uh, no dementia, had the highest prevalence with average estimate of nearly uh, 20% and 16. 
6.8% uh, uh, respectively, whereas the prevalence of the mild cognitive impairment was substantially lower. Uh, the age-specific uh, prevalence uh, of mild cognitive impairment uh, has universally been found to be greater than that of the dementia. And uh, mild cognitive impairment is about four times more uh, common than dementia when based on community assessments of non-institutionalized individuals. And many diseases can lead to cognitive impairment in the absence of dementia, particularly cere uh, cerebral vascular disease. However, for over a third of the individuals, no etiology was identified. The risk factor of uh, mild cognitive impairment are vascular, genetics, and uh, lifestyle factor. Especially uh, cerebral vascular disease or cardiac and systemic disease could be underlying disease for vascular cognitive impairment. Inside the brain, uh, tissue injury, such as microinfarcts, uh, hemorrhage, and uh, microbleeds, could, uh, could be uh, uh, underlying disease for uh, vascular cognitive impairment. And uh, oligodendrocyte loss, uh, astrocytosis, microgliosis, could be occur. It effect on innative or adaptive uh, immune response, cerebral blood flow, vascular reactivities, and autoregulations, and oxidative stress, and clinically show cognitive impairment symptoms, finally. In the cellular level, alteration of chemokines and cytokines and metabolic factors, uh, impairment of signaling transductions, alter epigenetic uh, regulation, impair neurogenesis. And if impaired neurogenesis uh, has occurred, cognitive will decline. The, tradi the traditional view of the mammalian brains is that neurons are not added in adulthood and it called no new neurons dogma. It means that loss of neuron is thus uh, to be irre irreversible in the adult human brain uh, because dying neurons cannot be replaced or recovered. This neuronal damage causes of a neurological or psychiatric disease. Contrary, uh, contrary to dogma, uh, since 1990s, the human brain known to produce new cells, such as neuron, in adulthood, and we call this adult neurogenesis. Neurogenesis comprise cell proliferations, survival, and differentiations to neuronal cells. New neurons are generated throughout adulthood in the two regions of brain. First, subgranular zone in the dendritic gyrus of hippocampus. Second, subventricular zone uh, in the lateral ventricular. In the rodent, olfactory bulb is also a neurogenic region. During embryo stage, uh, neuroepithelial cells uh, proliferate and differentiate to neurons and radioglia cells that differentiation to uh, astrocytes and neurons. Later, uh, in adulthood, neural progenitor cells in subventricular zones replicate and survival and differentiation to uh, neurons or astrocytes. And in hippocampus, uh, neural progenitor are located in 
subgranular zone. Yeah, this one. And your stem cell can self renewal and uh, by enriched environment, exercise, learning, estrogens, antidepressant treatment, lithium. <laughs> when proliferate cells are survived, it will be migrate uh, to granular cell layer and differentiate to neurons or astrocyte. BRDU is a chemical analog of cymidins uh, and in incorporate to DNA when replications. Uh, therefore, assessment of adult neurogenesis is performed through BRDU immunohistochemistry. Uh, adult hippocampal neurons are important for cognitive plasticity. According to an integrate model of the number and age of uh, neurons in the human hippocampus, the total number of neurons decline with age in the hippocampus and the dentary gyrus is composed of declining fracture, fraction of cells generated during a development. Also, 700 new neurons are added in each hippocampus per day in adult humans. Recent studies show that proliferating progenitors and immature neurons pool are stable with aging. It means that human hippocampal adult neurogenesis persists throughout aging. However, a uh, pool of uh, Christian stem cells are smaller in age human hippocampal dentate gyri and angiogenesis and neuroplasticity neuroplasticity decline throughout aging. Whether hippocampal neurogenesis persists throughout life in the human brain is not fully reserved. Here Tobin and his colleague demonstrate that hippocampal neurogenesis is persistent through the 10th decade of life and is detectable in patients with mild cognitive uh, impairment and Alzheimer's disease. However, the number of neuroprogenitor cells and uh, neuroblast and immature neuron are reduced uh, in mild cognitive impairments and Alzheimer's patients. Especially the number of uh, PCX and PCNA double positive cell is uh, reduced uh, in mild cognitive impairments and higher numbers of neuroblasts are associated with better cognitive status. It is known that the number of DCX and PCNA double positive cells correlates, correlates with uh, functional interactions between uh, presynaptic snare proteins. And uh, neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections. When neural injury or neurodegenerative disease has occurred, neuroplasticity compensate and adjust their activities in response to new situations or to change in their uh, environment. Here I show the, one of the neuroplasticity which is an axonal sprouting. So look in here. The axonal is sprouting. They make a... And one of the key factor uh, that regulate or modulate neuroplasticity is uh, BDNF, uh, brain-derived uh, neurotrophic factors. It's a member of the neurotropin family of growth factor. And when the BDNF re release, uh, nucleus uh, loss of dendrites and change in morphology happened. 
And BDNF uh, function is known as following, support survival of uh, existing neurons, encourage uh, growth and differentiation of new neurons and SNAPs, stimulates and control neurogenesis, and essential uh, to promote persistence of uh, long-term memory storage. Uh, in depressant state, uh, stress hormones such as glucocorticoid inhibit uh, peak crab, BDNF signaling, and it influences loss of dendritic size and change in morphology. However, after antidepressant treatment such as uh, flojectin, uh, which is a SSRI, BDNF enhances the assembly of new SNAPs and disassembly of old SNAPs by beta adducent. Also, uh, antidepressant influence dendritic spine formations uh, typically increase the number and size of spines. So in summary, uh, neurogenic capacity declines with age and dependent on in appropriate lifestyles and poor diets. In cognitive process, some of the strategies are proposed in humans and animals to enhance neurogenesis and counteract age-related cognitive uh, deficiency. First, uh, intake of a natural product that enhances uh, hippocampal neurogenesis uh, could prevent cognitive impairment. Second, intake a natural product that in a synaptic plasticity and or angiogenesis could prevent cognitive impairment. And a third, uh, intake of natural product that increased PCRAB or BDNF expression uh, could preventive cognitive impairment. According to the results of the previous studies, PERB, uh, such as new Japanese Rush, Grammy, uh, Hori Anders, St. John's Ward, Ostoku Hodas, offer cognition enhancer properties and may provide therapeutic application in Alzheimer's disease patients. Otherwise, intake omega-3 and curcumin may provide therapeutic application in mild cognitive impairment. This time I will introduce a compound which has protective role against cognitive impairment. Uh, Lutolin is a uh, belong to the flavon subclass of flavonoids. Green leaves such as parsley, celery, and broccoli are top the list of lutolin foods. And luteolin possess antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-tumorogenic properties. According to a few study, luteolin emulate chronic, uh, chronic cerebellar hypofusions induce cognitive dysfunctions. You can see luteolin treated res to significantly increase in percentage of time in a uh, platform region, those dependently in Maurice Water Maze test. And Maurice Water Maze is well-known experiment to measure long-term memory. If the experimental rest spend less time in platform regions, it means, uh, uh, cognitive dysfunction had occurred, and also lutolin reduced A beta levels in hyper hypoperfused rat brain. Also, uh, isoorentine uh, is a lutolin with glycosyl group. It's isolated from uh, pilostachys, uh, parentina, and buckwheat. It's known that iso uh, Orientin has an effect on cancer and cognition and memory. A uh, study of uh, Ko and his colleague, isoorientin iso treatment significantly uh, improved the cognitive 
uh, impairments caused by scopolamine. And isoorentin increased the expression of uh, BDNF and PCREP. Uh, in the hippocampus and frontal cortex of uh, scopolamine treated mice. And uh, one of the well known JAMU, which has a preventive effect on cognitive impairment, is a uh, Balagang. Uh, another name is Botucalu, Botucola, and botanical name uh, is Centella. Asiatica. Uh, the primarily active uh, constitution of uh, Centella Asiatica are saponins, uh, also called uh, treater penoids, which include uh, asiaticoid acid, uh, is included acetic acid and metacasoside uh, uh, and uh, metasiatic acid. And also uh, include a uh, ramoside uh, and asiatic acid and bramic acid. Uh, this component is uh, isolated also from uh, central acetica and may be responsible for a uh, central nervous system. And also uh, linoleic acid and uh, palmitic acid, steric acid is a uh, uh, oil, and some flavonoids deri uh, derivatives of uh, kerosentin and cam uh, camphorol is also um, included in uh, central acetica. Uh, here I'm going to introduce latest research results about uh, Bagaga. And Krioma and his colleague uh, treated a uh, bagagang and extract those dependently into the Alzheimer's disease animal model. Admi administration of the galactose and aluminum chloride accelerating the aging process and leads to neurodegenerations. To assess a uh, Memory functions, TMAs and YMAs, novel objective recognition tests are performed typically. As shown in a graph, the galactose and uh, aluminum chloride uh, could, uh, though significantly impair behavior and cognitive functions, besides causing damage to the hippocampal CA1 pyramidal neuronal cells. So uh, you can see the uh, percentage of uh, alternation is significantly decreased in the Alzheimer, uh, Alzheimer animal model and is recovered by uh, Bogotan. And this one is the Donepezil, it's uh, uh, for the positive control. And to study a pathophysiology of mild cognitive impairment in elder uh, using age animal is superb model. Uh, so the average lifespan of rodent is about two years. And in these studies, 20 months uh, aged uh, CB6F1 mice are used and Bogogang water extract was administered uh, drinking water. And Bogogan water extract improve a multiple facet of age-related cognitive impairment, which is associated hippocampal and cortical dependent memory. Um, also, uh, increased number of spine in dendrites sites is observed after Bogogan water extract by Golgi staining. And these two uh, results is uh, using uh, 
rodent. So this is an animal study. And so uh, let me see, there's uh, some uh, clinical study of bubble gum extract. So this is one of the results. And this uh, article is published by Indonesian research in Kajamada University. And to investigate the effectiveness of bagagang in improving cognitive functions in patients uh, with vascular cognitive impairments, author treated 70% uh, ethanol extract of bagagang uh, to is ischemic stroke patients with a cognitive impairment for three, six weeks. And for uh, positive control, they uh, treated folic acid. And Bogagang uh, improves cognitive impairments as folic acid in post-stroke vascular cognitive impaired patients. And especially Bogagang shows more effective than uh, folic acid in improving delayed memory call. Uh, fortunately, Bogagang uh, is well tolerated with minimal side effects. So it means uh, it's very uh, safety uh, to treat to a uh, human being. So uh, unfortunately, there's no drug for treatment of mild cognitive impairment yet. As you see in Bogagang study, uh, we can research with other JAMU in this perspective. Uh, because the compound need to uh, transfer uh, BBB, brain uh, blood barrier, uh, I think the hydrophobic compound is uh, better than hydrophilic compounds to uh, transfer uh, the uh, BBB. So uh, exjamous hydrophobic compounds have better response in brain than hydrophilic compounds. And some JAMU extract can stimulate precursor proliferations in the hippocampus <laughs> acting uh, by, cha uh, by change in cell cycle regulators. And some JAMU extract will serve as a pro-mitogenic stimulus for uh, neuronal precursors and increase BDNF expressions to enhance synaptogenesis. And some JAMU extract can improve cognitive impairments by peak prep BDNF signaling in the hippocampus and frontal cortex. So I know that uh, Indonesia has uh, numerous of JAMU and still a lot of study are performed today. And I look uh, forward to a lot of good research coming out of Universitas Surabaya um, in the near future. And well, not only the cognitive impairment, but there's a uh, lot of uh, uh, things to do. So uh, this is today's I'm talk only uh, focus a very uh, a small uh, uh, perspective. So, well, in the CNS, uh, uh, CNS, you can do the depressions or anxieties or what ADHD, and there's a lot of uh, uh, topics to do. So, uh, you can uh, look uh, Indonesians Jamu to uh, working at, uh, at uh, uh, those uh, disease. Okay, and thank you for your attention and uh, thank you everybody to listening my talk. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for a very interesting presentations. Uh, to give a little summary, Cognitive impairment has become a major challenge due to increasing life expectancy in world population. While pathognosis, uh, sorry, pathophysiology of cognitive impairment is very complex. But this is interesting. Contrary to dogma, which uh, I myself have been taught when my, I'm in the medical school, 
that human brain cells does not produce new cells, but indeed it does, and called adult neurogenesis. And also the last but very interesting one, Jamu or herb medicine has a promising future research perspective. Uh, due to time consideration, we are going to go to forward to question and answer. I believe we have two uh, audience member who would like to ask. The first one I would like to give to our vice dean, Dr. Ika, Dr. Yeah. Isma Ikawati. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Heru. Thank you, Professor Lee. This is really an eye opening for us. And uh, my question is actually, uh, well, what I learned from your uh, from your lecture is actually there are a co um, compound um, to treat the uh, cognitive impairment um, via three ways, I think. First, the hypocampal neurogenesis. And then uh, for the plasticity and angiogenesis. And the third one is actually by the stimulating the BDNF, if I'm uh, understood correctly. Um, I remember actually uh, in one of the hospital, the psychiatric hospital that we are actually collaborating, uh, they have um, they have a specific um, like a plants or flowers, and they give a treatment for elderly people. Uh, the thing is, uh, the thing now that they they do, they haven't done any research yet for that part. Uh, according to them that uh, when the, this elderly uh, surrounded by this flower or they're giving it to, uh, they're giving it to them, uh, they have like um, a better uh, memorize or, or just uh, improve their mem uh, memorizing. So I think this could be uh, one uh, potential compound that we can actually do the research for the uh, cognitive impairment. For the increasing yes. cognitive impairment, so I'm, I was like, okay, maybe that's actually part of the year, but we we have uh, we haven't done uh, any research yet, so this is one of the potential. And then um, uh, the thing is that the plants they they grow by themselves in on their own garden, so that is very specific. So we have a, we, we don't know yet. And then uh, my question is actually um, if we give the compound, the potential compound, uh, would that help to the elderly? Or is it any uh, time limited, for example, before 40 or before 50 years old or something? Or, and after that age, and then it won't be that, um, um, it won't work, it won't be that effective anymore. That my first question, and then um, with your uh, research about the bagagan, bagagan, yeah? um, it's actually a very uh, it's a very good, but because the the, 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 the the compound can improve the cognitive impairment, uh, but based on your experience uh, when you are doing the research in Indonesia, is there any potential herb? that you found uh, giving the same evac with the pegagan, but we haven't done anything or the research still limited. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, for your uh, good questions. Well, uh, or studying about the memory, uh, uh, you mentioned very uh, important things because uh, we want to uh, know when the uh, stage, the, well, if it is a herb, uh, the herbs are working which stage. So not only elder, but also in the young people, right? So, uh, but, uh, well, we still uh, not exactly the mechanism of the memory, so, but uh, uh, in scope of the neuroplasticity, uh, it's declined depend on the age. So, uh, so well, everybody uh, knows when we got the uh, elder, our memory will go into 
uh, decline it. So, yeah. uh, so uh, uh, in uh, respect on the cognitive impairment, I think uh, if not well, some um, stroke or some vascular disease also implicated a cognitive deficiency. So uh, in that case, we have to make another uh, specific model to uh, research for that. But uh, natural aging, in case, uh, we can study with the age uh, animal model and treat it the uh, well, components and figure out whether it works or not. So also in clinical study, I think uh, it's better to uh, do in the elder people than uh, young or normal people, because we, we cannot distinguish and we cannot, you know, the, uh, figure out the effect exactly or significantly when we treated uh, those uh, herbs to the uh, normal people or younger people. Okay. And your uh, second, uh, and what uh, you mentioned about some uh, uh, herb so, that yeah. effect in clinically uh, of uh, cognitive impairment, I think that could be one of the candidates to do research. So I think it's better to uh, go to the preclinical study, such as animal or in vitro study, to figure out how they work and then do the uh, clinical study more, uh, 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 you know, uh, f uh, clinical study. So, and for Bagagang, what's the, your second question, the Bagagang? Is there any other potential herbs that you found during ah, Indonesia? Uh, right now, well, I work with uh, Moringa. Moringa, yeah. Moringa uh, in University of Indonesia. So I am right now working with uh, PhD students with that in here. Can I have another one more question? Yes. If let's yes. say if we are not doing the uh, the the wet lab, we we just are modeling in silico the effect of this potential uh, compound, will that be possible? Uh, uh, it's possible if you have a lot of literature. Okay. So, well, uh, I'm not, uh, well, in Korea, we have, a, it's called a Dongi Bogam. It's very traditional uh, medical books about the herb. So actually we have, uh, we have some idea from that book. I'm not, I'm not sure you have uh, such kind of the herb medical books or some textbook about the Jamu. So if there you have, you can figure out from that one. So, but I think uh, it's a little bit hard to figure out it without doing the wet lab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Professor Lee. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ismaika. And the second uh, audience who would like to ask is Dr. Agus Cahyono, a pediatrician. Please, Dr. Agus, the time is yours. Thank you, Dr. Harry, Haru. I hope my voice uh, will be uh, heard clearly. Quite clear. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Prof. Lee. Good morning. I do apologize because I use mask. I'm at oh, no, it's okay. yeah, yeah. I do apologize for that. Uh, probably uh, thank you for your wonderful uh, lectures. Uh, uh, one one slide make me tickle to us. In the slide stated that in the estrogens my upregulate neurogenesis. Is that yes, right, Prof? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, does it mean that women have better prognosis than men, like me, I think, uh, or low risk dealing with Alzheimer? That's my one question. <laughs> okay. well, actually, uh, the hormone is affect uh, neurogenesis. So, uh, okay. Well, I think the 
uh, you, well, we cannot exactly match that if we uh, the neurogenesis increase the memory also increase. Mm. But uh, in case of uh, basically, actually, if we treated uh, hormone, the neurogenesis mm. would increase. So, okay. Well, it depends okay. on the situation, right? Okay. Uh, so. Uh, one of the shorts of phytoestrogen we know as tempe in Indonesia. I don't know uh, how it's uh, tra translate in English. I don't know what is tempe. Maybe you know tempe, bro. Pardon, I can hear you exactly. Hello, bro. Uh, yeah. Fermented soya, bro. Yeah, fermented. I don't know what is. Uh, Fermented soy cake. Oh, yeah. Fermented yeah. soy cake. <laughs> Fermented. Uh, uh, we call in Indonesia tempe. Tempe is, uh, I think, a source of phytoestrogen. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, does it have uh, uh, any role in neurogenesis, Prof? So if I I consume tempe for a, a certain dose, or I consume it regularly every day. Uh, do I uh, have low risk, reduce my risk to get Alzheimer? Mm. Uh, so well, well, I'm well. Actually, I didn't uh, study about uh, uh, study about the phytoestrogen before, but I think it could be a candidate to uh, study about the memory impairment, mm. uh, how they affect of the memory impairment. Okay. Okay, bro. Thank you for the answer. Thank you, Dr. Agus. Uh, and further, we have Dr. Jeffman, who would like to ask a question. Please, Dr. Jeffman. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hero. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank you also uh, to Professor Lee for your willingness to give uh, to share your knowledge with us. Um, uh, firstly, I would like to say that um, the, the the screening of the herbs medicine that potentially to to uh, to counter the my my cognitive impairment is part of uh, is part of develop a new drug to. To, to treat cognitive impairment, um, uh, but you know, but there is a several uh, several compound which potential uh, to become a new drug. Uh, for we try to in uh, for we try in the in the in the research. So what um, my question is, um, uh, how you generate or screening a potential herbs to. To, to use in your research? I mean, uh, how you decide this 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 compound like uh, Pagagan, I should uh, extract with water or I should extract with uh, ethanol? Uh, how you how you screening that? Um, how you how you decide to screening with, uh, how you decide to screen the, the screening the, the compound like that? This is the first question. Um, the second is um, maybe uh, it is possible to use a, a, a what is your opinion? How to use uh, in silico model? I mean, uh, firstly, we try to in silico model first, and then we try. Oh, so this company is potential. So we come to in vitro and then uh, develop it into in vivo model. Uh, so the last, the last, the last question is. So like you stated before, so the hydrophobic. Uh, uh, Hydrophobic extract. It should. Uh, uh, it's better than hydrophilic uh, extract. Uh, so, it, um, do you mean that um, extraction with ethanol is better than uh, water for for uh, for some some compound that we we uh, we try to to use in uh, CNS central nervous systems? Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, well, first. Uh, uh, well, for a single compound, I so I mentioned about luteolin. Uh, so that's the single compound. It's well known that uh, that luteolin uh, and also isoorientin is also uh, one of the luteolin because uh, the isoorientin is a luteolin with a glycosyl group. So it's a, a similar compound. So 
And those compounds are well known that uh, it in, uh, rescue the cognitive impairment. So that's one we can uh, study uh, about the single candidate compound. And in case of uh, Bologan, the Botucola, and well, some, uh, some study there's a uh, bromocyte. Uh, Brominocytes may be responsible for uh, memory and another uh, uh, central nervous system disease. So, oh, well, we, we can uh, study uh, with the single compound also, in case of bromocyte, for uh, doing the research how they uh, rescue the cognitive impairment. And another point, well, as you know that the uh, herb will not uh, have an effect not only for a single compound, right? So because there's a multiple compound and it could be uh, helped together. So, and it could be changed uh, the whole body systems to make, to uh, uh, improve memory or uh, improve another uh, other uh, well uh, 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 the body uh, uh, problem. So and in Korea, in Korea we have a tradi traditional view that after uh, treated the herb, uh, the uh, human, you know. Yin and Yang, right? Yin and Yang. There's a, a, a traditional uh, Eastern medicine uh, philosophy, Yin and Yang. So uh, we can uh, change the whole body of the uh, physiology. Uh, physiology of the whole body we could be changed and it could be uh, 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 change the uh, change um, the circulation, blood circulation, and it could also affect the memory, some kind of that. So some, you know, some uh, drug recently using in uh, Alzheimer or uh, cognitive impairment, the main uh, mechanism is uh, improved circulation. So, so that's the one point we can, if we there's some herb improve the blood circulation, it also may uh, affect in the uh, memory impairment. So, uh, well, sometimes the single compound can could act, but you know some the reason we uh, take the herb medicines in. Well, actually, we don't understand the whole mechanism, but clinically worse, right? Clinically worse. So for that, we can do that. But uh, in clinically, we have to do more study about the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So because we, uh, most of the herbal medicine don't have that kind of research, especially pharmacokinetics. So I think we, we if we study about the uh, what the program in clinical study we need to do more uh, pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic studies for in the future. So, do you think that um, the the potential uh, compound is better to, uh, better to extract with ethanol if we uh, want to use so it I for think, CNS? Uh, for in the you, you know the most of the CNS drug is hydrophobic drug properties, yes. properties. So if we extract it by water, there's a less uh, components of hydrophilic, right? So yes. then uh, it's hard to uh, transference the BBB. So if, uh, that's the reason of most of the, uh, the uh, CNS drugs are hydrophobic, not hydrophilic. So. I think it's better we can uh, extract in ethanol distributions much better for uh, the candidate for uh, 
Bro. I see. So uh, I have some question, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Hero. Can I no, ask? No again? problem. No problem. Okay. Time is uh, yours. Uh, okay. So, uh, Professor Lee, um, um, uh, uh, actually, we in Indonesia we have a book. We call it uh, Pharmacope Indonesia. So, Pharmacope Indonesia is contained of uh, traditional herbs that use traditionally for mm -hmm. several uh, indication. So maybe in the future we can uh, see this book as uh, our uh, a reference to develop some 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 compounds like that. And then uh, my last question is: uh, uh, I I want to know how the implementation of uh, traditional herbs in Korea Republic in a clinical setting could you explain it? Uh, thank you. This is my last question. Thank you. Um, so well, uh, first we can. Uh use that for uh, preventions, right? So you can use for preventions, not for therapeutics. So for uh, first we can uh, study with how they prevent memory loss or uh, for uh, memory impairment, that's one point. And well, for the, the clinical data, last time I showed is about the, uh, uh, vascular uh, disease uh, about the stroke patients, right? So in that case, this target for the therapeutic band. So uh, in that case, we can uh, use the herbal medicines to whether they can cure or not. So it's depend on the, what you want to looking for, I think so. But most of the herbal medicine is focused on the prevention first because it is much more easy to do work and it's much more easy to get the government, government, right? The, the, uh, to, uh, and also is uh, we need to concerning about the safety. So for the, if you want to use it for a uh, treatment, you need, you have to uh, treat it uh, very, sometimes very high concentrations. And so, and at that time, some uh, adverse effects can be occurred. So, uh, typically, it will be a uh, little bit more harder to investigate uh, herbal medicine to the, in the therapeutic model. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Chapman. Thank you. Uh, if other audience would like to ask, uh, we have several students who would like to ask. The first is Meta, uh, our, uh, yeah. our MC. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, hello, Professor Lee. Good hello. morning. Uh, Good morning. I have two questions for you. Uh, maybe this related to Dr. Jeffman's question. First question is we have many for uh, we have many herbs like pagaga and ginkgo biloba that increase uh, circulation, uh, especially the ginkgo biloba to repair our cognitive. Uh, we know that there is many compound uh, in the herbs. So my first question is is it uh, it is is it possible to isolate the single compound that affect in our cognitive? Yes, uh, it's possible. So, you know, I mentioned before that uh, uh, isolating toluene is one of the candidates for that one. And well, uh, in case of ginkgo biloba, you know, you mentioned that. So, but you know, the ginkgo biloba has very um, severe side effects, right? So, yeah. if, if we uh, take a uh, lot of ginkgo biloba, it has uh, some uh, side effects. So it's very, uh, uh, you, we need to consider about the amount of uh, daily dose. So yeah. that's another uh, important thing. That, uh, that's related to my second question. As we know, everyone is unique, Doctor. And uh, everyone is half 
uh, have different reaction to drugs or herb. So how we uh, how to general the doses of herb? So that that that's what that's the well you know you understand about the drug development uh, system, right? So right. Well, in that case, well, we do in clinical uh, stage three to uh, figure out the, um, the uh, amount, the dosage. So uh, we need a clinical study for that to deciding the dose. So, uh, well, in that case, we need like a thousand of uh, uh, people uh, to uh, treat it uh, those uh, herb or uh, extract and figure out which dose is appropriate for the uh, patients or for the human beings. So we need a lot of clinical data uh, to figure out the exact concentrations, I think. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Uh, further, we have uh, another question from Kanifa. We have a lot of questions, Professor, from our students, which are very enthusiastic. At first, Kanifa, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lee, for the change there. So I can give you a question. And thank you for the lecture. Is this really useful? So related to the brain functional, my family often use aromatherapy that in that you are you're pouring it to diffuser oil to to stimulate to make you feel more relaxed and uh, just make you my uh, and my mother often use it to make her feel really from her stress uh, after she she left from that stress she felt like she she popped out so many ideas come to her mind like any ideas maybe decoration or maybe cooking ideas or anything else. So is it, does it have any cor 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 correlation between the lavender and between the brain works or does it just your suggestion because you just feel happy, you feel extremely good because you're refreshing your mind with lavender oil? And my second question is, is there any evidence proven for aromatherapy to use I mean, is it safe or not? And what do you think about your point of view of this aromatherapy? And what kind of compound that we should use or that we should avoid inside of your aromatherapy diffuser oil, uh, such as like what I mentioned before is lavender. Okay, thank you for the chance. Yeah, thank you for uh, questions. Well, it's very interesting point. Well, well, a lot of studies show that um, aromatherapy has a positive, positive result in, uh, in the mood, uh, change the mood or uh, effective in uh, depressions, right? So, and it may feel uh, happy or uh, calm, uh, calm down and uh, relieve the stress, right? So I think in clinically, well, it, I think it works, but actually I'm not the expert, expert about the aroma, aromatherapy, so I didn't uh, work before. But well, well I think the uh, aromatherapy, well, when you're doing the aromatherapy, uh, some uh, compounds can, we, we inhale the compounds, right? So the kind of compounds can uh, administrate it by uh, nose, it, nose, or it can uh, activate the neurons which is in the nose, nose, so right? So, and it could uh, affect uh, uh, our uh, central nervous system. And finally, it can uh, show some effect about the mood change or uh, et cetera. So uh, I think, uh, that's kind of the theory uh, and well for aromatherapy we have to do uh, more work for about that because we still don't know exactly how it works right and 
we did we don't know the uh, true mechanism how they work in the CNS, but well, people use it and they feel that it works well by case by case, right? So case by case mean it's still not uh, scientific proof. So we have to do uh, some clinical data and show the scientific proof because dependent on the study model, sometimes they show a totally different results. So uh, we have uh, replicated and see how they work. I think so. But in case of aromatherapy, it's very hard to work with animal model. Oh, so I just want to, excuse me, I just want to clear it out. So in your point of view, does it safe to use for elderly? Because my mother is about like 40, uh, 50 years old and older. Is it safe if she used that for daily? Well, I, 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 well I, I can say is it safety or not because I don't have exactly uh, data for that. So, uh, but you know, uh, in pharmacology, well, we, we say that everything is uh, toxic. It's depend on the dose. So <laughs> if, uh, well, if you uh, use it appropriately, it could be uh, uh, good for your health. But, you know, if you take it more, uh, much more, then it could be a toxic. So I think that's the point. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, the time is 11 past 11, Professor, but we still have two eager students who would okay. like to ask if you will be so kind to okay. extend. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So the next question came from Alpha. Alpha, you have the floor. Okay, so good morning, Professor. First of all, I very it's a very great honor for us to have your lecture here. So uh, I would like to get a, hi a highlight from you, from your lecture. Uh, can you please suggest us for, uh, especially so we, because we are Indonesian, who actually really correlated uh, and re really connected to Jamu, especially we we already use Jamu for our daily life uh, because as we know, uh, Jamu has a uh, really near adverse effect. Can you please suggest us for something? Uh, where is the, the good one for the aim our, of our medication? Because uh, for the example, like these days, uh, Moringa is quite popular to prevent uh, a lot of uh, uh, to prevent and for the medication. So uh, also like my family is quite routine to, con to consume the Moringa for uh, their health. And also my parents uh, is already on 17 and older. So can we just get your point of view for your suggestion about this uh, Jamu connected to the near adverse effect? So that's all my question, sir. Uh, okay, uh, very uh, good question because uh, the most uh, important things we do not have a, a study about uh, drug interactions, right? Herbal and drug interaction because most of the elder uh, elder uh, take a lot of uh, medicine, right? Well, because they have uh, diabetics or the hyperpressure. So, well, actually one, at least one or two medicines are taken by the elder people, right? So when they uh, have uh, take the jamu or herb, we should consider about the herb and uh, drug interactions. So I think that that is the much more important because uh, in elder pep, uh, people, Sometimes, you know, some uh, jamus uh, prevent the uh, uh, Cetrocom P450. Uh, Cetro so uh, in case of if a uh, inhibit CYP3 uh, uh, and 4, it, it is, uh, so 
if that, uh, it will be uh, decrease the drug activity, right? So, or increase the uh, increase the adverse effects. So, uh, if you want to study about JAMU, so another point is study about the JAMU and uh, drug development, uh, drug interactions, or JAMU and JAMU uh, interactions. So, I think that's much more important. Uh, important, and also, well, I. Uh, uh, talk before the dosage is really important right so well if you are drinking a jamu by a tea i think it, it doesn't be such uh, uh show the side effect but if you if we if you take the jamu extract directly uh it they could show some uh other uh, effect for that and that's depend on the people not everyone so uh, you need we that's the reason why we have to do the uh, clinical study for jamu and figure out the side effect profile so well wrap up i think two things is important for clinical data one is for a uh, dose that means we have we need a pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic study for that one and second is about the herb and drug interactions, especially for the elder. Herb and drug. Uh, so uh, I got, I actually got your point of view, sir. Thank you. So I'm highlighting this one. So you are suggesting us to better use. Uh, to to better consume the single herbs and uh, and more adjust the doses, right? Yes, yes, and uh, use it very careful, especially for uh, the elder people who takes a lot of medicine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and the last question, Professor, uh, thank you for your willingness. Uh, from Stephanie, Stephanie Virakarsa, please. Good morning, Professor. Thank you for your time and for our lecture too. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, in your lecture before, you said that in depression, neurogenesis is decreased, yet by antidepression, antidepression the neurogenesis is increased by increasing the number of synapses. Yes. Uh, does, it, does the antidepression works just only after someone is depressed? So it means their number of synapses decrease and then we can increase it by antidepressant or we can use it in the non-depressant people so let's say when someone is have uh, when someone have cognitive impairment like alzheimer or parkinson disease can we use antidepressant in them so we can increase the synapse and increase the neurogenesis uh, in non-depressant people my second question is in these studies the compound or the plan works by angiogenesis or neurogenesis. Yet we know that uh, for memory to form long-term, we need neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that we can use this compound yet we have to exercise such as we have to learn or we have to uh, exercise our memory to make it work long last, uh, so, so that work uh, long-term or uh, we can only use this compound to make to increase someone cognitive. Uh, that's my question. Thank okay, you. very good question. So, uh, for uh, antidepressant effect on neurogenesis is, uh, uh, you know, the well, the antidepressant is not uh, treated for the memory impairment, right? Is uh, for the depressions or anxiety. So, well, that. Actually, the depressive patients, when when you uh, look the depression patient, uh, their memories are declining, right? So, well, we cannot uh, use it directly for only for the memory uh, cognitive impairment, but we can uh, use it use the antidepressant for the depression patient patients with uh, declined memory. So. And all in the uh, neurogenesis respect, uh, uh, the 
Well, uh, you know, if we treated entity present, the serotonin or catecholamine level will be increased immediately. But you know, the, the clinical uh, well effects will be come later, like two weeks or four weeks later, right? So uh, people, we do not know exactly the mechanism why the antidepressant cannot uh, show their effect immediately but it showed lately. So that's one of the uh, mechanism is neurogenesis because neurogenesis take uh, more than two or four weeks. That's the reason why the uh, antidepressant work uh, two or four weeks later. So in that point, uh, uh, the neurogenesis can uh, explain the mechanism of antidepressants. So, uh, and, the, uh, and mechanism of the antidepress antidepressant in depression. And uh, what was your second, sorry, what was your second? Um, my second question is, uh, this compound, they, they increase the neurogenesis or by angiogenesis to perform, uh, to increase memory. Yet to have long-term memory, we have to have neuroplasticity that as, we, as I was taught, it was only can be achieved by exercising such as learning. So uh, can we, does we have to include exercising our memory? Uh, yes, yes. And combine it to the compound that we use. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, well, well uh, uh, I, I showed the slide, I'm uh, showing the slide, so the exercise or learning can increase the adult neurogenesis also. And therefore, well, the exercise or learning will help to uh, sustain or, or uh, uh, rescue the memory uh, impairments, I think. Show, uh, and also so does exercise and learning uh, stimulate the neuroplasticity. So I think it works for that one. And also uh, not only uh, the new cells, uh, not only the neurogenesis, but also neuroplasticity, uh, such as uh, dendrogenesis uh, need to occurred uh, and it helps to uh, uh, prevent the memory loss. So I think uh, forming a new neural connections is also very uh, important. And if we lost uh, new neural connections, I think that's the reason of the memory decline. Yes, thank you. Uh, Professor, can I have one more question, please? Yes. Uh, in your presentation, the compounds or the plants, they work by angiogenesis or neurogenesis in hippocampal. Yet we know that hippocampus memory is just one, one aspect from memory. We have a lot of aspect from memory. And in cognitive impairment, there's a lot of cognitive aspect in that. Uh, let's say, we can use that maybe for Alzheimer's disease because in Alzheimer's disease, the Alzheimer uh, is shrinkage. Yet, how about Parkinson's disease when it's in the substantial nigra, which is quite uh, it's a different place from hippocampal or from the pulpus, uh, pulpus nerve. Can the neurogenesis works there too when it's not a commonly place for a neurogenesis, neurogenesis zone. Yes, uh, neurogenesis uh, only occurred uh, in the hippocampus, the uh, hippocampus and ventricular zone. So, well, uh, if the neural uh, cells can migrate to the, migrate it uh, to uh, the another part of the uh, brain, but you no, know, it's uh, uh, is really limited. So for the Parkinson's disease, you know, the dopaminergic neurons, 
the reason is the loss of the dopamine neuron, right? So in that case, it's uh, really hard to uh, say that. But you know, not only for the Parkinson's disease, not only uh, the dopamine neuron, but also the hippocampal volume also shrinkage for the yes. so. Um, the, the Parkinson's disease also have uh, Alzheimer's disease later. So that's the reason that uh, such as uh, neurodegenerative disease uh, show the uh, increase of the neuron and show the uh, anat anatomically uh, less uh, volume of the brain and uh, for you know the mild cognitive impairment is before the uh, Alzheimer's disease, so which that show not uh, anatom anatomically of the neurons. So uh, I think uh, uh, well uh, uh, we can. Uh, Talk about the increase the neurogenesis. Some uh, Parkinson, uh, uh, some symptoms of Parkinson's disease, especially the uh, cognitive part, will be uh, 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 rescue or uh, preserve, but uh, uh, not for the behavior such as working or uh, uh, not for the. Uh, maybe in the Parkinson disease. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. It's a very interesting lecture and I have a lot of questions. Thank you for the time yeah, for right. answering them. Yes, Professor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have reached the end of our meeting today, which is very a very good presentation, which is uh, quite an eye-opener and showing us that uh, potential for future medications and for future research. Also, we have, actually we have uh, more questions from the students, but due to time considerations, uh, we cannot uh, floor the question now. So on behalf of our faculty, we would like to express our gratitude to you, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And we would like, I would like to turn the uh, floor to Meta. Meta, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lee Hijie, for giving such informative and interesting presentation, and Dr. Heru Wijono for moderating this general lecture, and also to all participants for very active participation. Hopefully, this general lecture will be beneficial for everyone. Before we close this general lecture, I would like to invite all participants to open camera for photo session. Please, uh, sebelum saya menutup uh, acara pada siang hari ini, saya mengundang seluruh partisipan untuk membuka kamera untuk uh, sesi foto bersama. Okay. Start from page one. Eight. Wait. Page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page nine done thank you all for this participation for particip participation so we are in the end of this session on behalf on behalf of committee thank you all for making time to join us here today we wish you a very pleasant day thank you all thank you very much
Thank you very much, Prof. Lee. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Lee. <laughs> Thank you. Prof. Lee, thank, thank you very you much. Soon, in person. Thank you. Okay, Professor, it's okay for you to leave meeting if you wish. Thank you. Monggo, silakan kalau teman-teman mau leave. Ini yang Mas Heru, terima kasih Mas Heru. Yeah. Sami 